down from San Francisco yesterday with a constructive. first grade, I asked them, I said, do any of you have a message you want to give to the president? And they didn't respond real quick as in the United States. And she said, oh, you mean Ronald Reagan. income taxes by almost 25 percent. And today, we're enjoying one of the longest economic expansions in history. <laughs> Mortgage and auto loan rates are down. Inflation has plummeted from more than 12 percent to only 1.8 percent. And we've created over 11 and a half million new jobs. You know, I could tell that it was really working when they stopped calling us Reaganomics. <laughs> the trade deficit in September declined for the second month in a row and is now 30% below its peak. This is... <laughs> Leave home without it. <laughs> The American people know the truth. We don't have a deficit because we're taxed too little. And the, contrast, the contrast between us and the leaders of the other party is just as apparent when it comes to judicial appointments. Well, from Massachusetts, we'll be deciding who our judges are. Now, I'll bet you'll agree, I'd rather have a judiciary committee headed by Senator Strom Thurmond as he talking about political differences and all. Reminds me of a story. You can find out when you get my age, everything reminds you of a story. <laughs> it was a Democratic fundraiser at a downtown hotel. And when they came out of the fundraiser, there was a kid with some puppets. And he was selling them. Buy a Democrat puppet, buy a Democrat puppet. Well, two weeks later, the Republicans held the fundraiser in the same place. When they came out, the same kid was there with the puppet. Buy a Republican puppet, buy a Republican puppet. It says now they got their eyes open. And you've heard, of course, the contest and how many of our opponents keep trying to cut back on our defense spending. Well, <coughs> let me tell you, if we must ever ask those young people to have the finest weapons and equipment that we can produce and to see them.
is another special issue. We remain committed to our decision to move ahead with our strategic defense against ballistic missiles, SDI. Now today, we're dealing with the Soviet Union from a position of strength. And it was SDI that brought the Soviet Union to the bargaining table. And let me pledge to you, our goal is to keep America strong, to save the West from nuclear, mutual nuclear terror. <laughs> SDI is America's insurance policy to protect us from accidents. For some madman, I get hurt might come along for a Qaddafi, or just in case that the Soviets don't keep their side of a bargain. This is critical because the same people who announced phony troop pullouts in Afghanistan last month are saying, trust us on arms control this month. They didn't pull anyone out. There's just as many there as there always were. Phony bookkeeping won't end the war. They can't bring troops in one month and announce troop withdrawals the next. They can't talk peace in Reykjavik and wage war in Kabul. So I have a message to the Soviets. Pull back in Afghanistan and move forward on arms control. And then it was us, me with the baton and the band and the parade. But we started down the street and the band was playing and I was pumping the baton and Suddenly the marshal rode back down the line of parades, see that everything was coming along all right. And pretty soon I thought the music was beginning to sound faint. And I sneaked to look back. The marshal had caught up with the parade just in time to turn the whole band to the right down an intersection where they were supposed to go. And I was going up the street all by myself. <laughs> I tell that. I don't care if you win one for the game.